Hey, welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Well, here we are in week two of the COVID-19 lockdown in the Pacific Northwest. If you are in a situation like this, you are probably looking for things to do and ways to engage with people when you're not supposed to be leaving your home. Well, that impacts me a little bit and, and you as well, because typically we take a hike in the woods somewhere and do our devotional encouragement that way. It is a little tricky seeing that the state parks are currently closed at least they are in my area. So I thought today we'd go to a, a different type of place, somewhere that I've always wanted to go and have not, yep, have never been to before. And we do our encouragement right here. In this time when we're not supposed to be leaving our homes very much, this idea of self-sufficiency has come up in my mind. And it actually led me to an interesting passage over in Mark chapter seven. As I begin to read, you're gonna wonder what this has to do with self-sufficiency, but don't worry, we'll get there. Mark chapter seven, we'll be starting at verse 31. It says this, again, he went out from the region of Tyre and he came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty. They implored him to lay his hands on him. Jesus took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva and he looked up to heaven with a deep sigh. And he said to him, Befara, that is be open. And his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was removed. And he began speaking plainly. You see, we think of Christ's ministry as being this long-term thing because we've broken down every word that he said and every little bit of passage that we have from the New Testament, yet his time on earth was actually very short. And so in that amount of time, he's done enough amazing things. God has moved mightily in the lives of people that have come into contact with him. So as he's traveling, the word of his miracles has gotten there before him. In this case, a man is brought who can't hear, that he's deaf, of course, and he has trouble speaking. And the people believe that he could be brought to full healing. They bring him to Christ. Christ immediately heals him. And he can speak without any kind of stumble. And he can hear again. Maybe there's something in your life you need healing from, recovery from, whether that be addiction or a bad relationship or, or lacking sense of finances or maybe a physical healing. If you've never asked the Father to intervene in your life, I encourage you to do that this week. If you'd like us to pray along with you, you can put that in the comments down below. I would love to engage with you that way. Either way, God is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He can intervene in your life like he has this man's. Something very interesting actually happens immediately following this. And this is, I think, what brings us to the self-sufficiency concept. Starting in verse 38, we read this. He gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. They were utterly astonished, saying, he has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. You know, it's by these types of signs that we were supposed to understand that the Messiah has come. You would think after miracle, after miracle, after miracle, by the time you get to Matthew chapter 7, that the whole world would have turned and say, yes, this is the Messiah we've been waiting for. Yet, if you know anything about the New Testament, you know that's just not the case. In fact, it's not the case today. God intervenes in our lives on a regular basis, yet for the most part, the world wants to point to science or happenstance, or that it was just coincidence, or that your cancer diagnosis was diagnosed incorrectly by the hospital, not that God intervened and has healed you. You see, you really do have two choices. When God enters your life and changes things, you can have gratefulness in your heart and proclaim him in the right spot. Or you can have a critical attitude where you rejected that intervening in your life for the sake of self-sufficiency, feeling like you've done it yourself. In this story, Christ turns to the crowd and says, please don't tell anyone else. Keep this to yourself so the next city I get to, my ministry will be more organic, more natural, so people aren't going to be waiting. I don't want a three-ring circus, yet people could not hold their tongues. They had to proclaim this goodness. Yet even then, 
Everywhere Christ went, people weren't quite sure he was the Messiah. I believe the reason for that is because he was outside of themselves. They wanted that control. Their understanding was the thing that mattered. Their comfort was the thing that mattered, despite the fact that God is intervening. Whatever your circumstances this week, whether you were like me and kind of shut up at home and not able to go and do, or whether COVID-19 hasn't gotten to you yet and you're still going to work and you're still struggling with the bills and getting the kids to school, I want you to know that God is real, just as real today as he was in Mark chapter 7. Christ is still alive, and he still wants a relationship with you. Don't forget, God is big enough to deal with whatever your issue may be. Pray to him this week, ask him to intervene, and then give him the glory when he does. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging for you as it has been for me. I will see you right back here next week. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Be encouraged.